Well, hi there, Coburg Alliance Church. My name is Tyler. I'm a pastor here at CAC, and I'm going to be your host for today's worship service, for this Father's Day service. Yeah, it's Father's Day. If you're just learning that it's Father's Day, then you still have time, I think. You've got until the end of the day to go out and grab your dad a little something. Or maybe whip up some pancakes, give him lots and lots of bacon, fill his stomach. I know oftentimes the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, right? So maybe now's the time to get that done for your dad. These are the two, let me show you a quick picture. These are the two that have made me a happy father. My oldest is Isabel, she's just over two years old. My youngest is William, he's seven months old. And let me tell you, I had somebody here at the church tell me before we had our second, that two kids is way more than twice the work. And that is true, that is proven so true. My son has definitely kept us on our toes and uh, if you see bags under my eyes, those are 100% the product of my son, William. Yeah, so hey, happy Father's Day to you dads out there. And you know what? Uh, to those of you who, uh, for whom Father's Day is actually a challenge uh, and it's difficult, maybe it has to do with uh, your own relationship with your dad, maybe a tough relationship with your dad. Maybe you've lost a kid. There are lots of reasons that Father's Day might actually be a tough season, a tough time for you. Know that we love you. We're praying for you during this season. And remember that you have a heavenly father that loves you deeply and cares so much for you. Uh, especially during seasons like this. Well, we are in person and we're online today. Yeah, we're finally back in person. We're meeting in the parking lot. As long as the weather's good, I'm not actually sure. But as long as the weather is good, we're meeting in the parking lot right now for both, uh, for that in-person service and we're meeting obviously right now online. If you're new with us online, we want you to say hello in the chat room. Yeah, so head on over to the chat. Let us know that you're here. We love that you're here and we wanna to get to know you a little bit more. So. Uh, there are a few other features that you might tune into. The first is the prayer feature. You're gonna see that come across the chat menu. You can click that and there are gonna be people who will pray with you during this service. There's also a Bible feature. You can tune in to where we're at in scripture through the Bible feature. There's also a notes feature. Let's be honest, uh, we were really ambitious in the very beginning and we used this notes feature. Maybe there are some notes on there right now. I don't really know. You can check it and uh, you might find something you might not. Uh, maybe you can take your own notes. I don't know. Whatever the case, um, that's going to be uh, some of the uh, chat function or some of the features that you can find on, on Church Online. You're going to see a handful of things this morning. We're going to worship together through singing. You're going to uh, see us pray together. We're going to open up Scripture and, uh, and dive into Scripture. Pastor Darrell is going to be uh, speaking to us today from the Word. Uh, as we dig in, why don't you open, open up with me in a word of prayer? God, we're, we're grateful for today. We're grateful that we can gather we're grateful that all of us, no matter what our relationship is like with our fathers, no matter what the meaning of father is to us personally in a human sense, God, we're grateful that we have a heavenly father that is near to us, that cares deeply for us. And so God, I just pray that today, uh, that sense of fatherhood, uh, that sense of us being your children would deeply resonate with us. We pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Returning to you, 
we turn to you in your kingdom broken lives are made new you make us new cause when we see you we find strength to face the day and in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna. You are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna. All right, hey, we're back, and I'm going to share with you just a handful, just two actually, community highlights, some announcements. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit first about our leadership development program. We're a church that loves to develop people. We think it's our job. We think it's a part of the church's responsibility to make sure people understand their gifts, make sure they have opportunities to serve in the church, and really understand how they can live out those gifts even throughout the week. Monday through Saturday, where we live most of our lives, we want Sunday to be a chance for you to use those gifts uh, and, and understand and discern those gifts, but ultimately to be able to use those throughout the week as well. And so we have a leadership development program, and it's really geared toward a wide variety of folks, but oftentimes uh, the younger demographic. And so this past year, we started something not completely new, but sort of new. It's a leadership development program geared toward a couple of areas in our church, like youth and kids, and digital ministries. And even though this year was unlike any other year, we had a great group of interns that we wanna celebrate and we wanna to thank today because their internship has officially come to a close. Our two digital ministries interns were Alana Voth and Mackenzie Savage. And we had three interns that worked with either youth or a little bit with kids and with contributing on Sunday mornings when we were able to gather together. And those interns were Caleb Posthumus, Josh Harris, and Juliana Thompson. So much great work was done by all of these interns, and I know I really enjoyed the chance to work with some of them this past year. We have a little something to give to them as a thank you, to, you know, just to kind of say a little bit of a thanks anyway, that uh, we're gonna give to them during our outdoor service that is happening this morning. Most of these interns will be transitioning to school of some sort, this coming year, so we invite anyone who might be interested in being part of our leadership development program to apply for the fall of 2021. Check out our website for more information. And second, and sadly, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about the Van Essens. Yeah, they preached over the past couple of weeks, and Dan and Jenica have been here for a couple of years now, I think, if I remember, it feels like forever. Uh, the Dan and Jenica have been a part of our community. They are international workers in Mexico, in Mexico City, and they're going to be heading, heading back to Mexico City very shortly. And so we want to uh, take up a love offering for them. As they prepare to say goodbye and return to Mexico, we want to express our love and our appreciation for the incredible contribution they've made to CAC over the past year. What an honor, what a privilege it is, and it has been that God would invite us to be part of their lives and their ministry. So for the next two weeks, we're gonna be taking a special love offering for Dan, for Jenica, for their boys, Elliot and Ari. We ask that you prayerfully consider showing your love and gratitude by blessing them with a monetary gift offering. And Dan has assured me that he's gonna use some of it to buy me dinner before he leaves. So please give generously. If you'd like to donate to the love offering for Dan and Jenica Van Essen and the family, please do stop by one of the, uh, please do so rather by one of the following methods. 
Checks or cash can be mailed in or dropped off in our secure mailbox at the main church doors. Checks should be made out to Coburg Alliance Church with Van Essen Love Offering on the memo line. Be sure that Van Essen Love Offering is clearly indicated on the envelope with your donation. You can also send gifts through Interact e-transfer to info at CoburgAlliance.ca with a note on the memo line indicating Van Essen Love Offering. Now this is important. Because love offering donations are non-receipable, we would ask that you please do not use our other online offering methods. Hey, thank you so much for your generosity in blessing this family. All right, well, that's it for now. Let's continue in our service together. In stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased in me, I never.
Hi folks, my name is Paul. Happy Father's Day to you today. You know, it's funny that the last time I had the privilege of praying with you, it was Mother's Day. Now it's Father's Day. Uh, total coincidence, of course. But I hope that um, the fathers out there and uh, families can uh, get together as much as possible and celebrate this, uh, this day with their, their fathers in their lives. One of the things that I want to highlight in my prayer with you today is the state of persecution against Christians around the world. There are millions of people in different countries that are facing daily high levels of persecution and discrimination. Um, there is a, a Canadian organization called Open Doors and next Sunday on June 27th, they're having a day of prayer uh, for persecuted Christians around the world uh, entitled One With Them. And you can find uh, details of that uh, if you'd like to be included in that at their website, which is opendoorsca.org. The, the scripture that's been highlighted to me that, uh, that directly uh, speaks to this in, in my mind is, is Hebrews chapter 13, verse 3. And that says, Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we come before you today and, and ask you to bless the fathers in, in our midst. Help them to, uh, to stand firm in their, their role as, uh, as fathers, as leaders in their family, that uh, their, their children and the rest of their family can look up to them and uh, just, uh, I just pray that um, in this current pandemic situation that families are able to get together and, uh, and celebrate this special day. Lord, I also want to pray for um, our brothers and sisters in Christ around the, the world that are persecuted and, and facing discrimination on a daily basis. Um, sometimes in in North America and Canada, we feel as though we are being discriminated against uh, because of our faith, but it, it, it is nothing in comparison to the, um, the, the, the targeting that um, Christians in other countries are facing. Uh, they, they fear for their life. Uh, they're being um, targeted and discriminated against, denied basic services, and yet there's their their faith is strong, Father. So we're just um, so thankful that you are able to strengthen them. And we pray that you will continue to um, to send the Holy Spirit to guide them, to give them strength and faith, that they continue uh, to build your church here on earth. Uh, Father, we, we also pray for the, the current pandemic situation as, as always. Uh, which seems to be improving. And so, Father, we're so grateful for that. Uh, we ask that you be with all the healthcare workers as they continue uh, to struggle to keep people in hospital healthy and to, to fight this pandemic. And we, we're so grateful that the uh, vaccinations are continuing to spread out. Uh, Lord, we just pray that um, people will be will be kept safe in our community across the the. Uh, the country and across the world, and that uh, we can do anything and all that we can to uh, to help that. So, Father, we just um, we just pray for all these things, uh, because we know that um, our life here on earth is uh, is is but a fleeting moment, and that uh, when we keep strong to our faith, that we can look forward to an eternity with you. So, Father, just uh, help us keep strong. Keep, uh, keep faithful and uh, keep building your church here on this earth. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, work good morning, everyone. Dads, today is your day. Um, okay, dads, a uh, small boy was asked about Father's Day, and uh, he said, well, Father's Day is just like Mother's Day only you just don't spend as much. I don't know if that's true. Uh, I heard this definition of a father. 
Uh, a father is a man who carries pictures in his wallet where his money used to be. Yeah, that's a good one. And one guy, of course, said a father is a thing that is forced to endure childbirth without an anesthetic. See, you guys love that. I get to tell the joke and your wife elbows you. That's not fair. But it is Father's Day and I hope that it is a great one for you dads. I hope that you get spoiled. And if you can, make sure you call your dad today, okay? Um, I just want to acknowledge that this year as well, there was a number of men, uh, incredible and legendary men who went to be with the Lord. And that means a lot of you are missing your dad like crazy this morning, as am I, even though I lost my dad eight years ago. I just want you to know that we love you. We are praying for you all week long. And uh, I just hope God is really with you today. Um, this year, we've also got some men that have become dads or granddads for the first time ever. So huge shout out to you guys. Uh, well done. Well done. Okay, so today in honor of you, we are looking at the character of a great father by looking at one of the greatest stories or sermons that Jesus ever told. So if you have one with you, please do grab your Bible or your phone and flip with me to Luke chapter 15. Uh, fantastic, Luke chapter 15. All right, while you're doing that, let me say that our story begins with a verse, uh, excuse me, in verse 11. Um, but first, I need to help you place this story within its context. Uh, when did Jesus tell this story? Why did Jesus tell this story? In verse 1 of this chapter, it says that Jesus became increasingly popular amongst notorious sinners, tax collectors, and other social outcasts. Uh, the Pharisees and religious scholars noticed this and began to murmur, which, of course, is your first biblical Greek word of the day, Diagon guzo. Say that with me, everybody. Diagon guzo. It means to murmur. Yeah, they began to murmur. Everybody knows what it means to murmur? Yeah, murmuring is the sound that your blood makes when there's something not quite right with your heart. Isn't that true? Yeah, if you are all taking notes, you go ahead and write that down. The sound that your blood makes when your heart's not quite working quite right. Uh, to be fair, of course, that's a blood murmur. Oh, excuse me, a heart murmur. Um, murmuring is also the sound that your kids make when you ask them to do the dishes. That's true, isn't it? Um, it's the sound that you and I make when our plans conflict with our father's plans for us. Yeah, sometimes we murmur and it's the sound, of course, that religious people make when Jesus doesn't do what we expect him to do. I know some of you are taking notes right now. They began to murmur. This Man welcomes immoral people and enjoys their company over a meal, it says in the voice translation. Dads, when your kids start to murmur because you ask them to do to the dishes, are you more like the uh, take time to talk them through the value of domestic hygiene type? Or are you the do as I say or you're grounded type? Yeah, well, Jesus responds to this murmuring uh, by saying, you know what? Let me tell you a story. Uh, verse 3 says, then Jesus told them this Parable. Of course, not the one we're studying today, but actually three parables, three stories with a common theme. Um, all right, if you are somewhat new to the Bible, a uh, parable is a story designed to illustrate the truth behind life, okay? Uh, a, a truth about life. If you're not new to the Bible, a parable is where Jesus hides the mysteries of life, uh, the life of faith, the kingdom of God. So when you're reading the Gospels and Jesus stops what he's doing and starts telling parables, my advice to you is to stop what you're doing and just hang on what he says. The secret sauce of the kingdom of God and the very heart of Jesus is hidden in his words. Uh, but you know uh, also that he's telling the story to divide the crowd. Yeah, that's true. In Matthew 13, Jesus said that parables were designed to divide between those who will catch it and those who uh, consistently or persistently seem to miss it. You know what I'm talking about. Um, when you read them, uh, you'd think that they should be impossible, that these stories are so simple. How could you possibly miss what Jesus is saying? Parents, that's kind of like it should be impossible to imagine that despite telling your teenagers a hundred times that if you don't do the dishes, you'll have nothing to eat food off of. But the mice in your room will have something to eat the food off of. But your kids still continue to surprise you. 
Okay, well, that's all context, okay? That's not actually what we're talking about today. Uh, Jesus is building friendships with and seems to be showing preference for more and more of the people who used to be on the outside looking in. And so the Pharisees and the religious star scholars start murmuring and it surprises Jesus, okay? So to answer their murmurs, to answer their protestations, in Luke 15, Jesus tells three stories to highlight, to explain why he was spending so much time, so much energy and investment, why so much of his focus was on, uh, was on so-called outsiders instead of insiders. Uh, three stories to make plain the laser focus of Jesus' mission and vision and values and strategy. Three stories. And in what I think is a shout out to Canadians, a little passive aggressive or let's call it ironic detail in each of these stories. He actually contrasts the sound coming from these Pharisees and religious scholars in that moment to the sound coming from heaven. Did you pick that up? Have you ever read these stories? Did you notice that? Yeah, Jesus is very salty here. I kind of dig that. Um, what, what were these stories? Uh, he tells the story of a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a lost son, because in every crowd, some murmur about what heaven celebrates. Do I need to say that again? Let it never be said of us while we murmur heaven celebrates. Never let that sound come from our lips. Is that fair? Okay, so it's... Father's Day, and, and I'm going to read you this great story which Jesus told on that day, and we will celebrate the character of an amazing father. Uh, it says, once there was this man who had two sons. He was a good, good father. Uh, one day, the younger son came to his father and said, Father, eventually I'm going to inherit my share of your estate. Rather than waiting until you die, I want you to give me my share right now. Yeah, rotten kid. Um, and so this good, good father actually does liquidate some assets and divides them. Uh, a few days passed and this younger son gathers all of this new wealth and sets off on a journey to a distant land, it says. Uh, once there, he wasted everything he owned on wild living. Yeah, he was broke. Um, a, a terrible famine struck and, and that land and he, and he felt uh, desperately hungry, it says, and in need. He got a job with one of the locals who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs, maybe the cows. Uh, if the pigs in this story, this uh, young man felt so miserably hungry that he wished he could eat the slop that the pigs were eating and nobody gave him anything. Um, so he had this moment of self-reflection. What am I doing here? You know, back home, my father's hired servants have plenty of food. Why am I here starving to death? I'll get up, I'll return to my father and I'll say, Father, I have done wrong, uh, wrong against God and against you. I have forfeited any right to be treated like your son, but I'm wondering if you would treat me as one of your hired servants. So he got up and returned to his father. It says uh, that the father was looking off into the distance. And he saw the young man returning. He felt compassion for his son and he ran out to meet him, enfolded him in an embrace and kissed him. The son said, Father, I have done a terrible wrong in God's sight and in, in your sight, I have forfeited any right to be treated as your son. The father turned to his servants and said, quick, bring the best robe we have and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, shoes on his feet. Go get the fatted calf, the fattest calf, and butcher it. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, the fattest calf and butcher it. Let's have a feast and celebrate because my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and has been found. And so they had this huge party uh, in, re in response to the son, the youngest son coming home. Now, the good, good father uh, had an older son as well who was still outside in the fields working. He came home at the end of the day and heard the music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? The servant said, your brother has returned and your father has butchered the fattest calf to celebrate his safe return. The older brother got really angry and refused to come inside. So his 
good, good father came out and pleaded with him to join the celebration. But he argued back. Listen, all of these years I've worked hard for you. I've never disobeyed one of the orders. But how many times have you even given me a little goat to roast for a party with my friends? Not once. It's, it's not fair. And so the, the son of yours, this son of yours comes, this wasteful delinquent who has spent your hard-earned wealth on loose women. What do you do? You butcher the fatted calf from our herd. Um, the father replied, son, you are always with me and all I have is yours. Isn't it right to join in the celebration and to be happy? This is your brother we're talking about here. He was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found again. Yeah, do you guys remember that story? Um, even as I told it from the voice translation, if you're interested. Um, who do you relate to most in this story? Uh, is it the prodigal son who, who takes all of his good, good father's uh, wealth, all that he's given him and leaves and he runs off to spend all of his wealth, all of his blessing on himself, uh, as it says in wild living, but then the wheels fall off, he hits bottom, he comes to his senses, he humbly repents and returns to the father. Is that who you relate to? Um, or do you relate more or less uh, better with the older son who has always been you know, good, always been the good boy. And, and sometimes you admit, maybe you feel unappreciated. Yeah, maybe like you've never really known the father's love for you. And, and sometimes you get jealous when those who uh, you think don't deserve it as much as you seem to enjoy uh, God's favor, God's blessing so much more than you. Or of course, do you relate more with the father in this story? Because uh, let's be honest, you are a good, good father. Uh, or parent or whatever. Maybe some of you do though. Maybe some of you have children or someone who you love who has run off. Uh, maybe or maybe not to a far off country and maybe maybe not living wildly but you are waiting still for their return. Um, you may or may not see yourself in this story but you can become yourself in this story. Yeah, Henry Nouwen uh, wrote a book based on this story and on his reflections on Rembrandt's painting of the return of the prodigal. Yeah, his second last chapter is called Becoming the Father. This is what Nouwen writes, um, though I am both the younger son and the older son, I am not to remain them, but to become the father. No father or mother ever became father or mother without having been son or daughter, but every son and daughter has to consciously choose to step beyond their childhood, to become father and mother for others. It's a, it's a hard and lonely step to take, but it's a step that is essential for the fulfillment of the spiritual journey. Yeah, I, I've got to be honest this morning. I've got like 10 minutes more to talk, but I've got nothing better to say than that. Yeah, essential, folks, to the fulfillment of your spiritual journey, your life of faith, is that you step beyond your childhood, that you become like the Father for others. I don't want us to miss this this morning. This story doesn't just paint for us a picture of the love of God for messed up kids of all types. It actually paints for us a picture of the call of God on all of us, his messed up kids of all types. As now and said, every son and daughter has to consciously choose to step beyond their childhood and become father and mother for others. Um, listen, if, if you have any doubts of God's love for you, I hope that you'll stay sort of at the reunion part of Jesus' story, honestly, for as long as you need. Like, drink that in, that, that moment of reconciliation. Um, read yourself into this story. Imagine what it would look like for you to take some steps in God's direction. Is that fair? Um, if you've been living like either of the sons, you know, running wild or already bottomed out, if you're feeling like there's a part of your life that feels bankrupt, or, or maybe even for the elder son, if, if someone in your life has commented that you're becoming increasingly sanctimonious when you're not not uh, being plain selfish and jealous and angry. I hope you've got people who speak like that into your life. I just hope you'll do what 
what you need to do. I hope you'll do what Son One does and have a moment of self-reflection and, and take a step in God's direction. That would be a brilliant result of having checked in at Coburg Alliance today. Uh, man, that, that'd be enough. But, but if you're hearing something this morning about your own need to come back to the Father and it's finally sticking, just stay there in the story. Uh, take as much time as you need to process that because that's awesome. Like we, we love that part of this story. It is a great part uh, of this great story. It's just that what it's about, what, what the story is about is a challenge to move through reconciliation, to move through what you think is a right relationship with the Father and actually become like Him. Yeah, become like the Father. Let me put it this way. Uh, the majority of our time when, when this great uh, story is taught, we tend to focus on the incredible love and grace of the Father that accepts all of us who have found our way back from whatever mess we found ourselves in, right? That's how you've heard it's told. That's how it is told. When you meet someone who expects the anger and the judgment of God, they are shocked when they aren't struck by lightning uh, or they don't burst into flame the first time they come to a church and, and instead they experience this incredible welcome and acceptance of the Father. That's a great story. Like that makes for a great story. That's why we love this story. Uh, instead of I told you so or some Godfather-esque scene, you are no longer my son. That's the best Godfather I have. Sorry about that. Um, the, the father interrupts him. He's so ready to accept us and forgive us that he interrupts the speech and he forgives us before we can even get all of the words out. That's our father. He puts a, a signet ring on our finger that tells us that we're part of the family and in every way, true sons and daughters, no one illegitimate. He calls for the finest robe to cover any feelings of shame that you might feel and sandals. I always wondered about this. I've heard that maybe it's because servants might go barefoot but not sons. I, I don't know, but whatever this last piece is, it's just an incredible picture of the blessing and of the, the spiritual inheritance of the children of God. Every good and perfect gift that comes to us from the Father is ours. All we have to do is take a step toward them. Yeah, the thing is, and, and what people do miss because they're so excited to hear about the ring and the robe and the new shoes and, and then the party, right? Then there's a party, is that what the Father really wants to give us, you know, what he, what he really wants for us to inherit is his own heart. Yeah, the character of God. Dads, there are all sorts of things that you can and, provide, and, and should provide for your kids. Um, it is a great thing to try and grow them up and try and set them up, uh, launch them well taken care of. But there's nothing that they need more and, and there's nothing that you need more than the heart and the character of God growing inside of you and, and to be able to teach that so it can grow inside of them. So exactly what do I mean by that? Um, why does that sound kind of anticlimactic to some of us? Okay, you want us to be like God. Yeah, do you want us to have the, the heart of the Father? Maybe that does sound anticlimactic to you. I actually remember being uh, at the airport before this pandemic and I was rushing to get to my gate or something and I turned a corner and I almost ran over these two, I don't know, barely older than toddlers who were running around and they were wrestling and all that kind of stuff. And my my first thought was, where are their parents, right? Like, who's, who's responsible for these beautiful, terrible creatures? Um, that's, what, that's what parenting is about. It can be pretty daunting, actually, when it, it hits a, a new mom or a new dad that they're now actually responsible for another human being. Yeah, it's up to them. And, and that reality takes over your whole life. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3, uh, Paul tells us that maybe what that reality looks like. He says, dear brothers and sisters, if you come across somebody who is overcome by some fault or sin, you who are spiritual should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. But then in verse two, it says, 
carry each other's burdens, and in this way, fulfill the law of Christ. Yeah, carry each other's burdens. Actually, I see a parallel in these two texts, the prodigal son and the email or message that Paul sent to his brothers and sisters in Galatia, and really to everyone carbon copied in it, which by the way, he was expecting them to like and share with everyone else. That's how it was. I see parallels between these two texts, how you look for or look at someone who's gotten off track, right? Caught or stuck in a destructive behavior or mindset. Yeah, think about what your reaction normally is. If you don't see it or if, if you're not confronted by it, you're not going to help, right? Um, the father could see what was happening a mile away, right? Way off, way off in the distance, maybe, he finally sees his son crest a hill. Yeah, and he knew, he, he knew before I did, right? Um, my dad, just like my dad, he knew before I did when I was in trouble because as a father, he was looking out for me. Yeah, too many of us have turned the corner and come back to the father, but we aren't yet at the place where we're actually looking around for others who might be off track and looking for a guide. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Paul says, you know, you should, you should help that person, <laughs> right? Um, you should help that person. The second parallel, um, how you relate to someone who's been humbled. Yeah, the father saw him from miles away and his first thought was compassion. Paul says spiritual people gently and humbly help uh, others back. Yeah, that's what spiritual people do. Dads, the, the more like the father you grow, the more you're going to feel a fatherly or brotherly sense of responsibility uh, for those around you and not just your own kids. You're going to feel it for mine. Thank you, by the way, for that uh, very much. Uh, not, just, not just for your friends, you know, but for mine. Not just for your friends, but, but whatever. Um, the people who are sitting in the, in the front rows, the people who live on your street, uh, you're going to feel a sense of responsibility for your neighborhood and for your community. It's going to move you to step in and to accept the cost, right? To carry some of the weight, uh, of whatever burden is weighing them down, burden or brokenness. Galatians 6.2 says, carry each other's burdens. Why? Because this is how you will fulfill the law of Christ. Just let that echo in your mind right now. It sounds like a postcard, but it behaves more like a parable. You want to know the, the secret to the life of faith, the secret of the kingdom of heaven. You, you want to experience the deeper life of Christ to know how to fill and fulfill the law. Oh, it sounds like a postcard until you're actually asked to carry and, and, and not just call out, right? To carry more than you think you should um, have to or, or more than you think you can bear to carry, maybe more than you think you should have to carry. Sounds trite until God puts you in front of somebody who you don't think is worthy, right? Or, or who hasn't lived up to your expectations, your standards, who you think has made their own bed and so they ought to sleep in it. Yeah, when you're standing in front of that person being asked to carry that burden, well, something happens on the inside. Yeah, carrying that uh, burden and, and you'll, you'll start to understand the love of the Father. Um, you'll, you'll start looking more and more like the father and, and like his son, Jesus. Yeah, I just feel like I'm preaching to somebody today. Um, a good, good father spends a lot of his time making beds he didn't sleep in. That's true, right? And cleaning up mess he didn't make. It's true. Fixing stuff he didn't break and giving the absolute best of all that he has, not because his kids deserve it. I know I'm talking to parents out there right now. But just because he's modeling what the love of the Father looks like, that's right. That's true, isn't it? Um, all right, listen, let me leave you with a couple questions. Um, the, the question I want to leave with you this morning, the, the prodigal son came back to the Father with a speech prepared. So is there something in your life that you've been, that, that, excuse me, that has been putting distance between you and God? Um, something that you need to be talking about God, uh, talking to God about today. 
Is there something like that in your, in your life? Uh, maybe it's an attitude like cynicism or indifference that you've noticed. What about uh, bitterness or in, indifference? Maybe unforgiveness. Uh, maybe you've been pushing the boundaries in some part of your life and you've been getting yourself you know, in trouble or very close to trouble. I want to challenge you to come to the Father this morning. I, I want to encourage you to lay it all out in front of him, to be vulnerable and, and just give him your life. Um, speak openly and honestly with the Father about that. Because how Jesus tells this story is actually how it is in truth. God will meet you uh, with love and acceptance. You can have peace with God. But in more than that, friendship with God our Father. But second, I also want to ask you, um, this week, would you ask yourself, or, or maybe think about this, in this, you know, am I ready to become like the Father? Do I even want to be like the Father? Do I want to be not just the one who is being forgiven, but also the one who forgives? Yeah, not just the one who is being welcomed home, but also the one who welcomes home. Not just the one who receives compassion, but the one who offers it as well. I am, am, I, am I ready to spend my whole life scanning the horizon for those still out there? Or am I still focused only on my own family, on my own needs, on my own enjoyment, on those within, you know, the gates of my own community? Yeah, that's the thing about parables. They're profoundly simple. Uh, you really only get a couple choices. Jesus challenges us. Will you make your life about becoming like him or will you spend your life consumed by what you can get out of him? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. There, there is more celebration in heaven over those of you who are coming back to him this morning than there is over those of us who don't think we're getting our share. Yeah. Okay, dads, um, my challenge and encouragement to you today is to continue to cultivate the heart of the father in your own life. Maybe this afternoon, kill the fattened calf and barbecue up some steaks uh, because it is Father's Day. Um, and maybe, maybe read through some of the stories of our great father. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. Happy Father's Day.
a child of God. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me. Well, that's it for our service today. It's coming to a close, and I want to finish with just a couple things. I want to invite you to join us next week at our outdoor service here at Coburg Alliance Church. We're going to start our summer series, which is all about the book of James. Uh, but just a reminder, our digital ministry is here to stay, so if you want to come back here next week, we'll be here. Please do. But we're also really looking forward to gathering in person as Ontario continues moving forward, finally. To make this all happen, both in person and online, all this service stuff, we need you. Yeah, a lot goes into these services, and we think that when people serve together, they grow together. You might discover what hundreds of other people have discovered themselves, that while volunteering requires something from, from you, yeah it does, it will also do something far more incredible within you. In this time of regathering, we believe joining a team is a great place to reconnect and to make a difference. Even if you're new to Coburg Alliance Church, maybe you just joined us over this COVID season or just this week. Look, we've got a place for you to serve. So head on over to our website for more information. And even if you're not sure what the best fit might be, let us know. We'd love to talk about the best place for you. Well, that's it for today. Coburg Alliance Church, we love you and we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.